I could use some company. It's been some time since George has gone missing, with his brother desperate to find him, tracing all of his steps, coming across a house where he meets a mysterious woman calling herself Molly. It doesn't take long before Molly reveals herself to be a human-eating monster, ever since the beginning having had the intention to eat the protagonist, luring him inside the house. The question is, will the protagonist find his brother and will he find a way to escape this crazed monster taking the shape of a human? Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to Excuse Me Sir. Sorry about holding the microphone situation going on in here. As you can probably see from the background, this is a temporary location that I'm in. And you have to bear with me holding the microphone for the time being. With all of that said, let's just dive right into the video. In search of his missing brother, George Fly, who has disappeared under mysterious circumstances, the protagonist comes across an isolated house which he believes might have some sort of important information about the whereabouts of his missing brother. Or at least, they might have seen him pass this way, as the house seems to be on the way which the brother was believed to have last walked. Suddenly, an eccentric lady comes out of nowhere with the protagonist whom I will name Jim non-canonically, swearing that he didn't see her coming out of the house, being a little baffled where she came from. She instantly asks Jim what he's doing here and what he wants, introducing herself as Molly. In here, Jim has the choice to explain that he's looking for his missing brother or simply ask for a telephone so that he can call the police and report his brother being missing. Even when Jim doesn't reveal that his brother is missing and simply asks for the telephone, she invites him in, being quirky yet friendly, saying that she can ask her friends about his missing brother and if they have seen him. Being a clear red flag that something wrong is going on in here, as how else would she know about his missing brother, he tries to reassure himself that it's possible she has seen the missing posters and flyers. Yet, how would she know who Jim is and whether he is related? related to the missing brother or not. Being careful yet trying to find out more to what is happening, Jim plays along with Molly, not revealing he knows Molly is hiding something. When inside, Molly insists on calling the sheriff herself to ask about George, saying that he's a good friend of hers, not allowing Jim to make the call himself. Why don't I call the sheriff and ask about your brother? He's a good friend of mine. As Molly leaves, Jim has the chance to explore the house and uncover anything of interest. That's when he notices the vent to the basement with strange chants coming out of it as if a group of people are reciting something. Knowing things are not as they should be, with his brother probably being linked to this house and Molly, he decides to play dumb and get as much information as he can in order to save his brother, George. It doesn't take long before the peculiar clear lady calls for Jim, asking him to go to her in the living room. She explains that she called the sheriff, saying that he's on his way to the house to take each person's accounts and investigate the missing case. Jim, knowing she didn't call anyone as he didn't hear her speaking to anyone at all, continues pretending and playing along. Meanwhile, Molly urges Jim to go to her bedroom, pleading with him that she's lonely and wants to have some fun. I could use some company. Want to go to my room? The other option is to refuse and say that he will stay behind for the sheriff to come, but it doesn't end up really well for him either. When in the bedroom, Molly offers Jim to get comfy and feel at home, as she will change into something more appropriate for the occasion. Not being fooled too easily, Jim takes the chance to explore the room to gain more information about who this person introducing herself as Molly truly is and if his brother is here or not. Just as he explores the closet, he notices there are many different dresses, of which none would fit her, making it more clear that she might be an intruder who broke into the house, a house which doesn't belong to her, with the actual owners having had suffered 
a tragic fate. Jam then goes on exploring a backpack where, in shock, he finds the ID card of none other than his missing brother, George. Knowing for a fact something horrible has happened to his brother and it all relates to this woman, he plans on finding his brother and digging deeper in the story. As he's thinking of a plan, Molly rushes into the bedroom dressed for the occasion when she explains she wants to play a game, a game which has only one rule in which she always wins. She asks the protagonist a mathematical problem question. Regardless to what he answers, Molly, in a terrifying manner, transforms into a monstrous version of herself, depicting as if she is some sort of cursed entity when she says that she always wins, proceeding to consume him in a quick motion before Jim is even able to make any reaction. This is the first ending in which the description reads, Molly always wins. This displays Molly is not a normal human being and she has the ability to transform into a vampiric appearance consuming her victims. Finding his brother's ID in the bedroom and Molly knowing about his brother being missing before he even mentions it, it becomes clear she had a hand in his disappearance, very possibly having consumed him. Moving on to the next ending, if Jem refuses to go to the bedroom with Molly, instead deciding to wait for the sheriff or trusting his sense of rationality, not wanting to be cornered in a bedroom, Molly offers Jim to go to the basement to talk to her friends and ask them if they have seen George, saying that she's bored. If Jim accepts to go down to see if his brother is actually there or not, he comes across an actual real person dressed in a red robe, having a grey face with his eyeballs seemingly being missing and looking anything but a human, sharing resemblance yet his appearance suggesting otherwise. This mysterious and scary looking person explains they have been expecting Jim, revealing there might be more people than him down in the basement. The scary looking person entity offers Jim to join his group alongside other members, saying that they might know about Jim's brother, instructing him to follow him where they first need to pray before getting to anything else. Things become more and more bizarre and baffling, with Jim having more questions than ever before to who this strange looking person is. Is he even a human? How does he know Jim? And why are they expecting him? And what have they done to his brother? Is it possible George's disappearance had something to do with who Jim is and what they want with him? As if that would be the case, Jim could never forgive himself that something happened to George because of him. He goes along with whatever is happening here, as at this point, he's willing to face severe repercussions just for George to be okay, a true selfless sacrifice. As he joins the rest of the members who are all dressed in black robes as if being part of an organized cult, in the middle of them stands Molly who is dressed in a costume, making strange motions as if being signs praying to whatever entity they worship. That's when she orders Jim to join their prayer by drawing something on the floor, tracing the outline. After doing so, they place a strange looking animal on the sign demanding Jim to make the sacrifice as it is a crucial part of the ritual. Jim at this point having no other option plunges the knife as quick as he can into the poor creature who seems to be suffering, ending its misery. Despite performing the ritual and killing the poor creature, the black robe wearing members of the cult all explode into splattered blood, which angers Molly gravely, saying that he did the ritual wrong, chasing after Jim in order to kill him, showing her true monstrous appearance. It appears as if killing the poor creature with a heavy heart, unwilling to do it, but doing it for the sake of playing along in order to find his missing brother, backfired their ritual for their invisible god, making it kill them instead. If Jim finds his way to the laundry room or the shower, hiding in the dryer or behind the shower curtain, Molly manages to find him on each try, with a new ending being achieved, described as Molly finding the protagonist. Of course, it's not a good ending as Molly doesn't take it very easy on Jim. Finally, the third ending can be achieved if Jim interacts with the mirror in the bathroom, which opens to a long tunnel-like void, leading to nothingness with the description explaining that Jim managed to escape 
but the question remains, despite managing to escape the crazed and evil Molly, is he in a better place now or trapped within an endless void with nothing and no one there with Jem being all alone until he starves to death? It remains a mystery, who is Molly and who were her cultist friends praying a routine ritual? Also, what happened to his brother, George? Well, according to what we have seen so far, it appears Molly is the leader of a cult, with all of them being unhuman, as if being some sort of human-eating entities who pray to some sort of god, which might be their source of power, as when the ritual was done incorrectly, the followers burst into blood. Now, with Jem going into the void in the wall, he might be able to find his brother George, or he might doom himself for eternity. This was just a demo, with its full release expanding a lot more on the story. Make sure to stay tuned right here, as I will make a following video as soon as it comes out. It's been your host, Star. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.